Balao Bing, and welcome back to AR's Tales, aka the ART podcast. I am Hear Me the Bot. But I'll bing bing. As always, this episode is brought to you by One Audio. Tick -a -tick -a -tick -a -tick -a -tick -a tick. The power of music, you gotta buy the gear to use it. A hey, ba ding boom, but I'll bing. I don't know why my eyes made it look like I was like reading some type of copy or something. You know, like I was like uh one of those actors like accepting an award and looking off to the screen. What I'm writing, what I'm reciting right now is totally off my head and not being written. Nah, nah, nah. You know, that's whole shit. Uh, but anyway, a couple things I want to talk to you about today. Uh, I, a couple things I want to talk to you about. Pretty huge updates. I am back in production mode for Iris of Mercy. Finally, at that point, well, really what's kind of driven the point is the just the whole production side of publishing side for Allegory of the End is just more or less out of my hands. You know, it's in, it's in the hands of beta readers, but plot isn't going to be changed from this point. Uh, same thing for most edits. I mean, um. No one that's really responded back to me have said anything about the about any huge glaring issues or even any issues that I, that I, that they've been nice and enough to report anyway. And even at that, they've only uh, seen the non proofread version, which is where it's at right now. It's the proofreading stage being gone through with a final editor. It will be done May first. And then from there, it goes on to formatting. I finalized all the graphics yesterday uh, down to the last bit. I know we talked about the graphics being done before, and they were. But these are the final little, you know, niche edits to make sure that they're exactly on the line with the text. I also went through and got put everything in order for what graphics are going to go in between what chapter and how they work out. Actually, being, actually ended up being kind of interesting because how I originally envisioned it was that there was going to be one graphic every other chapter. So 13 graphics altogether. But then just out of necessity and just ideas and just uh, wants, really, the graphic grew from 13 to like 1921, I believe. Actually, 20 without the, the cover itself. So 20 graphics in between 26 chapters, that means that there are six chapters that don't have a chapter after them which at first I was kind of like, ah, you know, damn, I really like that idea of, of you know, mirroring and everything was going to be on along the line. But interesting enough, I was able to make an add another clue of it just because of how they are spaced out. You can actually I almost do a little Morse code, a little, you know, a binary to find out that there's actually a, 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 an, another deeper meaning in between that. Why I just dropped that major spoiler, who knows? But Honestly, what can we do? I'm not gonna edit this out. So we have that already on the way. Graphics are done. Everything for the most part is done. Banshee cannot die. The whole graphics of that and the whole art storyboard of that is all also on the way. It's on the hands of an artist right now. So the past two days, I was just kind of like, ah, oh, shit, you know, what? to do now outside of marketing outside of getting like the merch up and everything what can i do now and it felt the perfect time that i started just putting everything together especially after doing taxes you know got the already got a, uh, the, some of the refund back which is awesome uh, definitely incorporate if you can by the way folks and um what i realized is that in september which I actually thought was October, but I actually started the Neo Tino in September. So, so September will be the, the annual, my first annual anniversary of starting the company. So I realized then that when I, I realized when I made that realization, I guess, that I will want to drop a second book by September. You heard it here first. And while the you know, Al Allegory of the End has been delayed like a motherfucker. And I cannot, you know, what can I do about that? I have learned enough 
with in, in just in the process of it that I will I'm pretty confident that I can make the September short line in full production full made and out by September and I'm gonna tell I'm gonna run it down how so what I did in the past and yesterday and beginning of the day before well I, I started to get everything the full two book series of Iris of Mercy I decided to just plot it out the same way that I had allegory, I have allegory of one, uh, allegory of the end, volume one and two, already plotted out to the T. I did the same thing for Eyes of Mercy, you know, make sure that everything sways and everything, you know, meshes all well. And um, so I can have a clear idea of how the chapters goes and yada, yada. So what I landed on was that how it's going to be break, broken up is that there's going to be the two halves, like I said before, it's going to be Haas's half and then it goes into Alice's half. And they both have the little intro that is basically a mirror of the same situation because they were both in the desert. They both had the, the, the idea that they were going to die and then they were saved by a vision of something they can be in the future, right? A vision of what they can be. For Haas, it was the frozen bush talking to him, telling him that, you know, his... That he, still, that he has much to do, that he has a purpose, that, you know, all these things and, and get it, pumping him all with the idea of the, of the hero's journey. And then on Alice's side, you have her being saved by a maiden of mercy who inducts her into, the, into a clan and she goes all her own different route. So how it's going to go is that the book is going to be broken up into Haas's intro, which is already written, are pretty, pretty happy about it actually and even edited down a little bit. Then we have chapters, <coughs> oh, excuse me about that. Then we have chapters 1.1 and it goes all the way up to 1.12. And the reason I did this is because again, first part, it's almost like the albums of yesteryear, right? Side A and side B. So in side A, you have Haas's intro, then chapters 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, all the way up to 1.12. Then you have B-side, Alice's intro. Then it goes from Alice's intro to 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, all the way up to 2.12. And that is the climax of the book. That is the end. So what I'm going to do is when I finish getting the first 12 chapters causes for well i guess the, the first 13 right including the intro and just a little a little side note a little teaser it is going to end up being that iris of mercy is going to be 26 chapters which so was allegory of the end it's actually kind of crazy that they ended up being like that way completely out of their own fruition actually kind of cool uh especially kind of cool that i kind of didn't plan that at all with Allegory of the End. Like at first it was going to be like 30 chapters and then I, you know, mushed a, a couple chapters together and got rid of some in order for, uh, and, and added what their content was going to be to another chapter and got whittled it down to 26 basically. But this one is completely made 24 chapters with the two intros totaling 26. So anyway, we have that whole thing going. So after I get the intro and Haas's 12 chapters to a way that I want and the way that I want plotted just right, X, Y, Z, I'm going to hand it off to my editor. So the plan, the idea is that every month, basically, starting from the, after the release of Allegory of the End, which I'm thinking after having to agreeing that I'm probably going to have to push it back even further. I'm sorry, folks. I don't know if I mentioned it before, uh, on here before. I, I believe I did, though. And I believe it's going to be coming out mid-June now. So basically, starting June, I'm going to be finalizing those 12 chapters, being bow. And then during July, I basically hand off the first part to the editor being bow right and while i'm doing that i'm also dropping it on wattpad ink it i'm dropping it on reddit i'm letting the i'm getting letting readers get their teeth into the into the reading a little bit while also promoting it a little bit while also on my end getting a little bit of free 
content editing in, in a way, right? If anybody catches something, if something doesn't make a little sense, they can drop it in the comments, let me know, works out perfectly. And also, I also have a, a little group of beta readers that have been going through Allegory of the End and have been awesome, really positive and diverse group, of, group, uh, group as well, which I'm really happy about. I didn't aim for just, you know, the person with the the Legend of Zelda tattoo glasses like mine engages. You know, I aimed for, you know, soccer moms. I aimed for it. any person that, I mean, if I went on your profile on Instagram and I saw that you read even Harry Potter, I'll, I, I would I would have sent you a, a little message. So going off that, I'm going to be using all those things to kind of do a group content editing while I have my other editor doing the actual professional editing. So as that's going, I'm working on the other half of Alice. And while all this is going, and because you kind of get the, the point, right? So when I finish Alice's half, I then hand off that half to the, I, I then hand off that half to the editor. Then I get Haas's side back and I work on the formatting of it. That's something that I very mistakenly forgot about for allegory of the end i didn't really consider it in the whole like gantt tree the whole gantt chart of how everything's going to be plotted out major mistake on my end and something i definitely will work on this time and in order to combat that you know i'm gonna stagger it so i'm gonna be editing so as i have the edited you know half back how's this side i do the formatting and all that now, this book will also have graphics, but will have a significantly less amount of graphics. I was just thinking about it early, uh, earlier today. I'm thinking the book will have four to six graphics in total. Off the top of my head, one for each of them will be kind of a, a nice little sketch, a nice little graphic drawing, uh, akin to what I have for, you know, in, in behind me that you can't really see because it's out of frame. But you, you can check it on the website, you know, the Metroscape, the pixel art ones. Basically, it's going to be a scene to depict the environment. So for Alice, it's going to be, you know, the maidens, the, the, the clan home, their little temple area thing that they have in the mountains. And then for Haas, it's going to be their nomadic tribes of the Iris, of Bl Iris Black, that's within sector six and the, the whole seaside community and X, Y, Z. So you have those two, boom, out the way. Then what I'm thinking is that I'm gonna have another one depicting what, how they are in, in combat, how they're dressed in combat. So you're gonna have, you know, Alice and her maiden garb, you have Haas and his iris garb and then you also have another graphic on each side of depicting what the, the weapons that they use, right? The, right? the special things and the mysticism behind them. And basically I think that's gonna be the, that's gonna make up the remainder of the graphics. So in total, we have one of each for environment. We have one of each for character design, basically how they look you know, when they're 16, when they're 17. Then you have two graphics each, I'm thinking, depicting the mysticism, the, you know, the, the cultural norms of their, of their newfound families, of the tribe, of the clan, right? Then I'm thinking maybe one more, if, the, if it only ends up being that I only need one graphic per, in order to depict all, all the cultural norms and whatnot, then we'll have one of each having a quick little bio of who the leaders are. So the high shaman for Iris Black, and then you have, actually, I, I never even came up with a name for the, a title for the leader, I, I guess mistress, I don't know. Uh, head mistress, I don't know. Although I really don't like that name, Mr. It sounds almost like she's like uh, working a brothel. I'm not trying to get that whole image. I mean, these are badass women here. So I'll definitely work on that title a little bit more. And if anybody has any recommendations, I send them my way. You know what I mean, gay? And gals. Um, 
But then those are basically the graphics I have laid out. So the way I'm going to stagger it and just have everything done, I am pretty hopeful. Well, I, you know, crossing my fingers here that if I stick onto this regiment and really go on with it, I can have Iris of Mercy laid out by September, if not maybe beginning of October. But I think I, I can, I'm really going to push for that September. Trust me. Then again, what is my word? I've been saying Allegory of the End was going to come out, what? January 12th was my first prediction, and now we're looking at June. I mean, June. What, what am I even saying? But I'll, I'll at least say, if I can't give you my word on it, I'll at least, I, I promise I'll try. That's the best I can do, right? All that I could be is all that I could possibly. Really good line. If, if you don't, if you haven't heard that song by, uh, the the connoisseur the artiste little Wayne oh <laughs> uh it's actually a really good song but anyway on to the next thing that I wanted to kind of talk about I think is a decent parallel decent segue from what we were just talking about before with everything I, I've been aiming for and everything I'm trying to do with our allegory right and Iris right is while I had my two day little stint of just, uh, you know, having my thumb crammed up my butt, just wondering like, oh, I will, you know, what else can I do for allegory? Uh, um, I decided to go and actually watch The Matrix because there were certain elements of, of stories that I told people that they would always go back and say, like, oh, that's like Matrix, you know, three. And I was like, I had never seen Matrix two or three. So to me, the idea of The Matrix began and ended with just the idea of The Matrix. Like, oh, we're in a, we're in a cocoon thing, being controlled by aliens, blah, blah, blah. And I went back and actually really watched two and three. And my God, I mean, I'm a, I really am a Matrix fanatic now, if I wasn't before. Just everything about it, the, the story, and also the, the prequel slash parallel quill, whatever you want to call it, uh, work that is the Animatrix, which is six or seven, I, can't, I actually can't remember the, the count, but it's a collection of short stories made in different varying degrees and styles of animation that depict and go further into the story and the lore of the Matrix and everything that the Wachowski brothers, now sisters, uh, developed. And just, for, first of all, I am a, I'm a huge sucker for art, so, Anytime that I, I can watch a cool anthology that has a whole bunch of varying different art and, and they're vastly different from one another, I'm just always ga game for it. Love, Death, and Robots on Netflix that just announced a season two. Woo -woo! Coming soon. I actually believe it's coming out later in, in, in May, which is going to be awesome. Definitely going to binge the fuck out of that. But... I, I, I'm a huge sucker for that type of animation. And they had that. And not only that, but the lore and the story was just phenomenal. And in a, in a sense, I do like using the same thing, right? The, we, don't have, we don't have one artist. We have two, three on, on kind of roster with, in Neo Tino. So all the graphics, or I can't say all the graphics, but the graphics do vary in between style and art and color and not color, black and white and pen and graphic and vector and blah, 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 all those things. And also I kind of throw my hand in there too. Although I'm easily not as talented as the other authors I have on the roster, but I threw, I don't, I do throw my hand in there. Right. And to give me a little bit of credit, most of the graphics I made, you know, I, I like made the, the source of it and I handed it off to somebody that could actually make it a lot better and computerize it and do all the beep boop bop boop, you know, whatever they got to do. So beep boop bop boop. What artist is doing beep boop bop boop? Where am I coming? Where, what am I getting it from, huh? What am I done? What am I done? But the Matrix, I just cannot get over the lore and it's almost like, I found another franchise to hate from the pit of my heart because I love it so much. I've talked on end of how Star Wars gives you that feeling because it just, as a writer, it's like, what am I supposed to do? Everything fits in this goddamn story. And if I can make a parallel 
I actually think the Matrix and the and Star Wars do have kind of a bridge. If you think about it, the way that the Force works and the way that Neo bends reality and whatnot, basically they have superhuman, crazy superpowers based on their understanding of the universe. Force users have an understanding of the force and how the force is like one with nature and blah, 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 and X, Y, Z. And through their understanding of the force and also I guess being force sensitive, right? They can get this idea. They can uh, understand that it's something that's manipulatable and then they can you know manipulate it to do some crazy stuff. And again, I've talked about on end that the force is just a great writing tool because it has no limit and you can bend it around any story you want. You know, Stranger Things could easily exist in a Star Wars universe. You know, you have almost anything can exist in a Star Wars universe. Then you have The Matrix, which again, it's from Neo understanding that life is a simulation, that life is just code, that he is able to bend and do all these crazy things, you know, f- start flying and do dodging all the crazy bullets and all the crazy shit that he ends up doing. But even then, there is a little bit of the force sensitivity because, you know, spoiler alert, he is the one. So there is a little, there is something about his particular code that allows him to go just a little bit further than what Morpheus or what Trinity can do. And they are crazy, you know, Matrix users or however, however you want to name or whatever the fuck. But Neo just has a little bit more of oomph in the same way that I guess force sensitivity or, you know, the whole dyad thing that Rhea and um, Rilo had in the latest trilogy. So it, it's, a, it's a really cool back and forth and really interesting as well because that, is that whole like superhero element, but almost laid within a cool level of, I don't even know what, like conspiracy ther- like level mythology. I don't know. But it's an awesome concept. And one thing that I'm pretty happy about is while there are certain concepts that I guess I took from either one of them just like subconsciously, I definitely didn't take that whole superhero element of it at all. I definitely aimed it more around, you know, science fiction, the development of technology, and really it's more character development. As we talked about endlessly in other chapters, I mean, other episodes on, you know, solo cast, group cast, you know, it's like, common theme in basically all of writing character development is the through line that you need you can make a story about anything you want anything you want it just has to have that little bit of something that pulls you into it that goes like oh, okay i had i've had that feeling before i know and had and, and can empathize or sympathize if i haven't gone through it before with the emotions being conveyed to me by the writer through this character xyz and that's what really pushes you through anything and that's uh i think that is reminiscent of both good writing bad writing i mean if if you have great writing and all you're doing is writing like prose after prose after prose i think that can be just as much of an eyesore as a person with poor writing ability is actually writing a plot and advancing the the story forward so it is it is a, a a back and forth and you really have to you know find a really good balancing board to stand on and i'll speak i'm speak, um, speaking as a person that's you know dangling from either side you know i don't have it figured out yet but on the route folks on the route i mean um but again with the whole matrix thing i just love that again i just love the progression of the prequels if anything the only thing that i would say no, I mean, honestly, that there's really nothing I could say. The only thing that I feel that people maybe would have found lacking in the second and third books, and books again, in the second and third films was how the first one was just a little bit more in your face. It was, you know, it was a whole red pill, blue pill. It's the obvious thing of like, you know, you're in a reality, blah, blah, blah. And it, it, again, it, it kind of hits home to that natural thing that I think everyone has. And whether that is really a true indication of us truly being in a, in a simulation ourselves, or if it's a whole bunch of a mirror out of other reasons, but it's interesting that we, I think we can all empathize with that idea of 
you know, what's around me is what is is the environment I'm in real. And I'm just, honestly, it, it's an inter, it's such an interesting concept because where what 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 is the genesis of that thought in humanity? When would we have started to question our reality? And if I can be honest, I think it has to be the introduction of technology. You know, the devil, the, the devil works with idle hands, right? I don't know. I think I might have butchered that saying, but essentially it's when you're allowed to just be bored and hang out and just do whatever, your mind really races. And oftentimes it doesn't race about, you know, flowers and ponies and, and rainbows. It usually goes into the darker path of the road. Darker side of the road. I don't know what I'm saying there. So it's just interesting that they, they kind of just nailed down on that concept. And again, that's why I made the whole reference to, to Star Wars, because it's just, no matter, it, it's that feeling that no matter what I write, somebody can always look it up and be like, oh yeah, this is like that thing in Star Wars. Oh, like, oh, this is that thing in, in the Matrix. It kills me. But it's something that I'm, I'm a lot more open with now, just through, you know, if I would have made this realization and if I had watched Matrix 2 and 3, and again, it's really interesting, the, um, the things that I missed out on in, in 2 and 3 that people had referenced, uh, made small references to the book. I'm not saying that like plagiarized or anything by any degree, but just small little things like, like oh, that was reminiscent of something from uh, 2 and 3. It's really interesting because when I just recently saw them and I did a little bit of back search, their inspiration for writing those sections were inspired from real life religions and mythologies, which is where I got the inspiration to add those elements myself. So it's interesting that we both, in a sense, got the same, drew from the same type of inspiration, but just because of, you know, human memory and just, you know, you know, the fact that I was alive during the, when the Matrix was made, people will always point to that as a, as a, as a derivative, which is an interesting concept because I wonder, and, you know, this is a huge if. But I wonder if I'll if it'll ever get to the point where my book will be viewed as a, as a derivative, and then people talk. It's like, oh, this is like the that scene from Allegory of the End, or this is like that scene from Iris of Mercy, and then I have to be the I have to be the one to be like, oh no, 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 no. that is like the scene from, you know, the Matrix, and then they point out, it's like, oh no, no, that's a scene from you know the the Torah. And then they, and then the Torah goes like, oh no, no, that's a scene from a religion that we picked up in the civilization that was prior, before we got resetted. It, it's just, it's just an interesting. It really like you, you hear before that no idea is original, but it just it, it blows your mind when you actually see it in in full effect that you can work completely on a different side of the world on a completely different idea, and then you can just find somebody with, you know, reminiscing reminiscent ideas. I remember when I moved to California and I was trying desperately to find, like I said at first, my idea wasn't into writing books. My idea was to make this into like a, into an animation and to make it into a, into a movie, some shit like that. So when I went to LA, first thing that I did was I tried to find like other directors and other people that to kind of move that plot forward. And I met this one character uh, and he, he was a character. Trust me, I didn't misspeak there. He had this idea for a book and I, I honestly I can't remember the, the, the title of the work anymore but what it was and it wasn't it wasn't a book it was actually a movie and I always liked his while there were a lot of you know the, a lot of eh, about the about the whole situation you know I always admired his drive a lot and how he, he seemed to have like a plan that even though he wasn't honestly falling through with it himself it was always nice to hear that he had like a plan and how his idea was that he understood that the work that he was, that I'm about to tell you about was, you know, his, his avatar. That was like what he needed a lot of funding in, in order to create. So he had this idea for all these smaller kind of more artistic films that he could uh, use to kind of fundraise and get more notoriety to the point that he can build up to making this work. And what the work was about was actually really interesting. It was the whole idea of artificial souls and how you couldn't now i'll be honest with you i can't kind of break apart what was his writing 
like his idea and what was kind of what I threw into the into the batch when I heard when I heard that the concept was just a, a really cool concept. But basically, it was the idea that what is the the, the self, right? Is the self the body or is it the soul? And then like, I, you know, most people would probably smash the B button, the soul, right? So it's like, all right, so then what is the soul? Does one soul make up like a million bodies that just keeps on coming back to earth or are new souls created? Actually, you know what? That little part right there is what I made, is what I made up. What his work began and ended was just simply the idea of artificial souls. And then he had it with this idea of a blue sun and how the blue sun was made by these people that were kind of like a, like a symbiotic robot type of thing that understood the concept of uh, that they were making a, a fake sun and they, no, the, that they were making, starting to get the technology re, uh, right and ready to create an artificial soul. And I think the blue sun is somehow incorporated with it because like the species uh, lived on that sun and they colored it blue for some reason. I can't remember what, but I remember when I, when I moved out of California and he started telling me about that idea, my, it blew my mind because my book has a blue sun as well. You know, that's actually one of those funny things where I could just tell the difference between a person that was, uh, I don't know, I guess a little more mindful of the, of the science and science fiction, because the reason for my blue sun has a, a, a purpose it's a blue neutron star whereas his was just like a, kind, of, kind of like almost artistic it was like oh no like I, I i like this idea of having a blue sun so i morph the story around it and i'm not knocking either side i just actually thought it was interesting that we just approach it from a from two different angles and arrive at the same conclusion and again it just ties together with the whole idea of like you know what is your idea Every it's a South Park episode, you know. Simpsons did it. It really is true. I mean, and even and like like they noted in that episode. If you go back to that Simpsons episode, they probably stole that idea from a Twilight episode, a Twilight Zone episode, or an Andy Griffith episode. And Andy Griffith stole it from something that he saw Betty White doing, and Betty White stole it from some weird ventriloquist that she saw when she was in her twenties. I mean, it just keeps on going back and forth to the point that I, I'm really starting to understand now that it is an idea about originality or plagiarism as much as it is about voice. And it's something that I've said many times on, on, the, on the podcast before, but I guess it's taken me to, to watching Matrix, ironically enough, to really understand and, and drive that home and feel it like in my chest and just feel, like, I guess, a little better about the things that, I, that I've made because I have all this crazy paranoia about the, any, and Again, I'm talking about any minor little subplot. If I feel that there's not something mirroring in it and something that I've seen or something that I watch or another book that I read, my gut reaction is to get rid of it just because I, I'm obsessed with the idea of making sure that I have my own work. But I'm just understanding now that that is an impossibility. It's like make, finding a ball that is completely 100% to the surface of pie. It's like, dude, you're going to be, you know, you're going to be sculpting forever for that. So with that in mind, this is going to be the end of the podcast. I honestly don't even know how long I've been recording, but I have a good idea. Man, I actually really think I'm, look, I swear, I, I'm not lying at all when I tell you I, I have, did not pay attention to the time at all. And without looking at the time, just because that's not how Zoom works, I do believe that I'm at like the half hour mark. Close to the money about it. We're going to see about it if I'm right then I'm the man, what's up? And if I'm wrong, then... <laughs> yeah. Why am I always wrong? <laughs> but you heard it here first, just as a recap for the, for the episode. Iris of Mercy, look out for it. It will be up on Wattpad, bare minimum by July. And I'm hoping for a release September. You heard it here first. Allegory of the end. Also heard it here first, being pushed back un poquito, like two weeks uh, into June, into mid June, about. And that is that. Oh, almost forgot. Friday, I'm actually recording it today. We have 
another group cast and it is all female guests Ooh, finally did it finally were they was able to do it just because with the last episode it was you know lately it's just been just complete sausage sausage you know so and while you know I, i'm not knocking it you know shout out to pl shout out to all the all the guys that, that were in the previous episode great bunch but more a little bit of the of the feminine energy in there you know more so than the one episode that tara and Lori came on so we finally have full female panel it's gonna be awesome check it out it's gonna be dropping this friday that is uh two days from now i don't know what day was i think today the 21st so the 23rd check out for that on the 23rd april 23rd group cast all female panel and also nice little you know excerpt nice little uh, throw in i am releasing another peer vlog a nice little author interview tomorrow and uh, the reason i'm giving it an extra episode is because the author that is going to be on that panel is actually the one I'm, of the episode I'm releasing tomorrow. So I just want to make sure that it's, I'm not lying. It is a panel of past guests. I'm just going to squeeze it in right before Friday, right? And then also another thing that, that I kind of wanted to highlight was that just because, just as a caveat too, there was, I want to, like I'm already naming that episode the disaster cast because everything that could go wrong went wrong with that episode. Her internet connection was shitty. Then when hers cleared up, mine was shitty. Then it was something about the phone. It was something about connection. I mean, it was up and down, left and right, throughout the entire thing. But she just was such a trooper and such a delight to talk to that I'm going to edit it up and do something and, and release it anyway because I'm telling you it's worth it. And then as a redemption she'll be there on friday so make sure to check that out and make sure to check out her episode on thursday this is the art we're gonna pretend i didn't say that folks this is the ar's tales and i just messed it up again this is ar's tales aka the art podcast i am ar me and evidently i didn't mess up that up so peace out and we will check up on you next wednesday for the solo cast